Hi, Mark Gordon with your Gold, Silver, and Spiders report for Monday, November 14th, 2011. We're looking at the GLD right now. It was uh, up 1.82% this week, and you'll notice that um, the index is coming up against this upper trend line. And uh, what I did was I um, drew a line along the lows here, which go back over a year and a half, and then duplicated that line and then moved it up, catching a couple of the highs here, which is forming our, our trend here. So we are in an intermediate term trend in gold and also on a larger scale, a long term trend in gold. And, uh, but we are coming up against this resistance area. So a lot of the intermediate term traders are starting to back off of their gold positions uh, and lighten up and expecting a pullback here. Now, of course, it could go higher. Uh, anything can happen here. Of course, it did go higher here back in the summertime but came back down and tested, uh, retested its uh, lower trend line. So uh, gold looking strong again this week. And going to a daily chart of the GLD, we can see this uh, trend uh, in place here. Uh, we had a trend going here and then uh, it steepened uh, its upward uh, move here. And uh, this week we came up against this upper trend line here and then have pulled back. And uh, Friday, of course, was an update 1.65%. Um, not quite getting down to the lower part of the trend line. Uh, perhaps the trend will steepen here uh, or we could uh, start falling back. A volume was light uh, the last three days and uh, had average of volume uh, on Tuesday and then above average on the update on Monday uh, on a gap. So um, gold still looking strong, still trending higher. And on a positive note, uh, we are still um, above uh, the 50 day moving average, this blue solid line. Uh, which is very bullish here. And uh, if we <coughs> scroll down here and look at our stochastics, uh, they are still what we call embedded. Um, uh, the black line is at 80.39. Now, when, when both of these lines get above 80 for three days in a row, it's called embedded. And uh, uh, the uh, index can move much higher with this configuration. Uh, if you uh, drop below 80, though, and close below 80, um, it, it would be a sell signal for a lot of traders. So just to warn you about that, but uh, still stochastics looking good. And we look, we look at the MACD here. That crossed uh, back here in October and is still uh, in an upward trend with the black line above the blue line. So MACD in a bullish configuration as well. Looking at the SLV, the silver ETF, uh, up 1.63%. And a nice move here. Um, we are now above this blue solid line, the 10-week moving average, which is very bullish. We do have overhead resistance coming here at the convergence of the 40-week and the 20-week moving averages. Uh, at about the $36 range, so uh, beware of that. But that is a very good sign to see it clear uh, that 10-week uh, moving average. And uh, volume has been light, though, just to warn you on that. But silver uh, uh, trying to make a move here. Uh, been in this trend here uh, for a couple of months and uh, trending higher. Now, we, when we go to a daily chart, we can see something happening here. Uh, this blue line here is the 50-day moving average. And you can see that we've come up against it uh, before and uh, uh, backed away. Uh, actually, back here, we tried to get up to it. It fell back um, and then made another run for it after testing this 21-day moving average, this red line. Made an effort to get above it, couldn't do it. Pulled back to the 21-day line again and now has tried to make another move but could not get above it. Uh, volume was light uh, on the up days. Um, actually, below a volume, uh, average volume here for the last, uh, I don't know, week and a half or so. So uh, it would be a, a good sign if silver could get above uh, this 50-day uh, uh, moving average and close above it. Uh, if it got two days of a close above it, bring a lot more traders into the market and we could make an assault on this $36 range here. Looking at stocks now, this is the SPY, the S&P 500, um, up almost 1% here, closing uh, just above its 40-week moving average, this black dotted line. Been stuck in a trading range here for the last uh, three weeks here. Um, and uh, caught in between the uh, 40 and the 20 week moving averages. Still above this key 10 week moving average though after a nice run up off the bottom here. So holding our own here, uh, kind of moving sideways, digesting this massive gain, uh, not a bad thing. Now I've drawn a trend line along the tops here. If we're gonna have a rollover, um, this would happen uh, if uh, we could not get above uh, this trend line here and close above it. If we do, it's very bullish. We'd be above all the key moving averages and all uh, uh, in this overhead resistance we have here. So uh, we could make a run at the previous highs here in the $135 range. So um, <clears throat> S&P 500 looking good on a weekly basis if we can get back above this upper trend line. 
And here's a daily chart of the uh, SPY uh, in this trading range here moving up. Um, you can see that uh, we have been caught uh, in between the 100-day, uh, I'm sorry, the 200-day moving average, which is this black dotted line, and the 100-day moving average. And uh, But our 21-day moving average, the red line, is pushing up higher. Uh, and you can see now that the 50-day moving average is moving higher too. So uh, uh, moving averages, uh, the key uh, shorter term ones are moving up, uh, which is a good sign. Um, <clears throat> we still have a lot of congestion here to get through with all these uh, moving averages. And of course, we do have that overhead resistance uh, off the tops here. So um, S&P 500, uh, I believe it's just stalling right now, uh, trying to uh, gather some strength for a run. Um, uh, time will tell here. Uh, let's see what happens. But a lot of volatility. Um, and, but holding on to gains that it made up off the bottom uh, that it made here in early October. So there you have it. Uh, good luck trading uh, next week, everybody, and have a great weekend.